Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 11 of the chapter Equilibrium. In this video and the next few consecutive videos, I am going to be telling you about the applications of the equilibrium constant. Mainly what I will be telling you now is only a recapitulation of what we have already done. So let us start with it. What does, what are the applications of equilibrium constant? First of all, we must understand when is equilibrium constant significant and let us un just revise equilibrium constant once more. The first point about equilibrium constant is that it is a value which is, which can be calculated only when a system is in equilibrium when the reaction is proceeding at the same rate in the forward and the backward direction and the concentrations become fixed and the partial pressures if they are gases they become fixed so equilibrium constant is applicable only when the concentrations of the reactants and the products are fixed and they have been attained they have attained an equilibrium state a fixed state or the equilibrium state the second point about equilibrium constant is that the value of equilibrium constant is independent of the initial concentrations of reactants and products. You may start with a large quantity of the reactants and the whatever be the concentration of the reactants. The equilibrium constant in that value you only have the, uh, the values of the concentrations of the reactants and products at the equilibrium state. So it doesn't matter whether you started with the reactants or you started with the products. Was the uh, concentration of the products zero initially and the reactants something or was the uh, concentration of the reactants zero initially and you were starting from the product side. It, is, it doesn't matter how you started. What only matters is the concentration of the reactants and products when equilibrium has been established. The next equilibrium constant is temperature dependent. If you remember, whenever we have solved a problem or whenever we have talked of an equilibrium, we always mention the temperature at which the equilibrium is established. So equilibrium constant of one particular reaction may vary if the temperature is different because for that particular temperature, the concentrations are fixed. But if you had the same reaction with the same stoichiometric coefficients, but at a different temperature, the value of equilibrium constant would be different. So equilibrium constant is temperature dependent, having a unique value for a particular reaction represented by a balanced chemical equation. The reason being that as the temperature increases or decreases, the rate of the forward or the backward reaction, one of the two is favored and the other is not which affects the value of the which affects the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products and hence the value of the equilibrium constant so equilibrium constant is temperature dependent then the next point is that equilibrium constant for a reverse reaction is the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction this is a mathematical uh, thing to understand you have a reaction like H2 plus Cl2 gives you twice HCl. And if you calculate the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction, what would it be? You say equilibrium constant is K and Kc since we are talking of concentrations. The concentration of the product which is HCl raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient 2 divided by the concentrations of the reactants raised to the powers of their stoichiometric coefficients. And since both of them are 1, the stoichiometric coefficients, we have the power of 1 which we don't write. So equilibrium constant for the forward reaction for this reaction is HCl to the power 2 divided by concentration of H2 and concentration of Cl2. Now if we started with HCl as the reactant and the equilibrium was established in the backward direction, then if we are calculating equilibrium constant for this reaction, that is HCl forming H2 and Cl2, then we can call that equilibrium constant K dash. And K dash, if you see, would have for the reverse reaction, these are the products. So H2, Cl2 come in the numerator and HCl comes down in the denominator. Due to which, if you really see, this equation is the inverse of this equation. So, for the reverse reaction, equilibrium constant of the reverse reaction is actually the inverse of the equilibrium constant for the forward reaction. 
or the equilibrium constants in forward and backward reactions are inverses of each other. You could say it like that also. The last point here is that if you have a chemical equation and you multiply the entire chemical equation by a, one certain number or you divide all the reactants and products by a certain number, then the equilibrium constant for that new equation having new stoichiometric coefficients would also be related to the original one. There would be a relationship between that and the original one. So what does the language say? K is related to the equilibrium constant of a corresponding reaction whose equation is obtained by multiplying or dividing the original equation by a small integer. Let us understand this. Our initial equation was H2 plus Cl2 gives you twice Hc. Let us assume that I multiply this equation by 2. If I do that, I get 2 H2, I get 2 Cl2 and I multiply 2 HCl by 2 which makes it 4. So now what will be the equilibrium constant for this equation? If we calculate the equilibrium constant for this equation, it will be equal to HCl, equal, the concentration of the products raised to the power of their stoichiometric coefficient. 2 into 2 is 4, therefore HCl to the power of 4, H2 to the power of 2 and Cl2 to the power of 2. So equilibrium, we call this K double dash now. And K double dash, if you really see, is nothing. What was K? K was HCl to the power 2 divided by H2 and Cl2 which we have, I have written here. And if you raise all of it to the power of 2, it is nothing but the square of k. If you really see, k double dash is nothing but the square of k. So if I multiply the entire equation by 2, I have to raise the equilibrium constant of the, equi of the uh, original equation by 2 under the same conditions. And had I have divided the entire equation by 2, I would have raised it to the power of 1 by 2. That is the square root of that would have been the equilibrium constant for the new reaction. So this is what you understand about the equilibrium constant. But when we talk of applications of equilibrium constant, there are three ways or three places where we look for equilibrium, uh, the applications. The first, when do we use equilibrium constant? when we want to predict the, re the extent of a reaction, whether the reaction has proceeded more towards the product side or has it leaned more towards the reactant side. Then you can predict the direction of the reaction. If you know the equilibrium constant, then you can tell at this time when the concentrations are this, 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 then it means the reaction is proceeding towards completion or towards equilibrium or is it moving towards the reactants. So you can predict that at a, if you know the concentrations at a particular time which is not the equilibrium, you can predict which direction is the reaction moving, leaning towards. And the third application of equilibrium constant is that we use it to calculate equilibrium concentrations. This is something that in the past 3-4 videos in the numerical problems we have already been doing. We have been calculating the equilibrium concentrations when the uh, initial concentrations were given to us using the value of x, a variable and then making a quadratic equation and then solving it to calculate for the value of x and then arranging it in according to the values to get the value of the concentrations at equilibrium. So these are the applications of equilibrium constant and in the next three or four consecutive videos I'm going to explain these one by one and solve a few numerical problems on these two. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye bye for now.